Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Whole Roofing Podcast. Today we have our one and only Ellie with Hi. us. So we're going to sit down and talk to her and just get to know her a little bit better and um, we'll get started. Yeah. So Ellie, just tell us a little bit about yourself, um, how you got to Whole Roofing, what you did before Whole Roofing, family, etc. So I'm Ellie. I am the office assistant, office manager answers all the phone calls. Um, How I got here was I was working two jobs, um, single mom, trying to make ends meet, and Bob texted me one day and was like, hey, I knew you were interested a while back, and we have an opening. We need someone. Would you be interested? And um, came in and talked to Emily first, interviewed with you. Kind of just didn't really feel like an interview, just felt like Two Which, friends catching up. A we've... little bit backstory. We've known Ellie for um, like well, well, you and Bob been together thirteen years. Yes, and I knew Bob beforehand, so it's been at least fifteen years that I've known Bob, and thirteen that I've known you. Yeah, so um, knew her before she came on the team. So, um, but anyways, okay. back to your story. So sat down with Emily, chit chatted for a while, kind of caught up on life and. Right away, it just seemed like a good fit, and then Bob came in a little bit later, um, talked to him, kind of ran down just the quick what day-to-day operations would be, and I've got no history or knowledge of roofing, siding, or gutters. Uh, My dad did construction, so I kind of knew things that he had taught me, Um, but I was like, oh, it can't be be that much to it. Like, I got this in the bag. (laughs) Not going to be hard at all. And then um, I think my first, it was my first or second day, Bob hands me a computer and he's like, all right, go ahead and get to work. And I was like, whoa, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, And I think the next week we took off. We're like, yeah, all right, we're going to be gone. You're going to be so gone for a week. So you man the, and they're like, hey, go run shingles out. And I think I was like, what is, what's a shingle? <laughs> Not really that bad, <laughs> but um No, I was like, this is a lot more in-depth than what I thought it would be. But I was like, I've got this. I'm ready for the challenge. I can figure anything out. So it was just kind of putting in the work, watching YouTubes, all of our training videos that we have, and bombarding you and Bob with questions of what's this, what's that, how does that work. But I'm starting to get a better handle on it now. I mean, it's a lot, and every job is different. Yeah. As you see, like, yeah. um, Ellie went out today on a job I did. And I got did. to see how it was done, and she yeah. said that, you know, it really makes sense now seeing, seeing it in it. action. Because that we, I mean, we take pictures at every job, and they're in all of the customer's files. So, like, you see pictures, and you're like, I'll go back and, like, review what happened or I'll hear, like, oh, they needed OSB for this reason or that reason. And, you know, we opened the roof today and looked at it, and I was like, well, I don't even know what, like, why is it black? Well, that was a watermark. I'd never seen that before. Um, But then being able to see our crew and um, our site manager and everybody kind of come together and be like, what's the best game plan? How are we going to do this? And within two minutes, they had a game plan, and we were ready to go. So it, it was just a really good experience to get my hands in there. Got up on a roof two years in. They finally <laughs> put me up there. Um, but it was just a really good experience for me to just be able to see that, especially with me having my hand in just about everything that goes on here, um, just to get more hands-on training and knowledge and be like, oh, I can identify that now. So. They're like, it makes more sense yes. now that I'm seeing it. Mm-hmm. Um, tell us a little bit about um, your kids, your family. Um. So I um, have four children. Um, Hunter, Layla, and Blakely are my three biological. And then I have Graham, who's my step bonus kiddo. I don't really like to say that. He's just my kid. Um, and then I've got Bryce, who is my fiance. We are getting married in just a few months. Um, but before they stepped in, it was just me and Hunter and Layla. And we've grown and made a, an amazing family. And it's something that I've always wanted and I've got it. And now we're going to do whatever it takes to get where we're going. And, um, we have a goal for what we want for our kids and 
want to make the world better than what we had. And we had amazing childhood. So to be with someone that has the same goals, the same mindset, wants the same things, it makes you work even harder to get where you want to go. So um, what motivates you day in and day out to just get up and hit the pavement? I know you, we talk a lot about Dave Ramsey around here, but honestly, like having that financial security and that financial freedom, um, I didn't have that before. Before I came here, I was working two full-time jobs and it was barely paycheck to paycheck and I made it work but it wasn't where I wanted to be. And being able to come here, work one job, it was only eight to five. It wasn't, you know, I was going to the chiropractors at 6.45 in the morning, working there until five, going to the bowling alley by 5.30 and work until 10 or 11. And the most I got to see my kids was dropping them off at daycare and crawling into bed. And being able to do an eight to five, put my all into it, have that financial security now, and still save up for things that we want and need and not have to worry about debts and loans. And to be able to say I'm 27 and have no debt is a huge motivator for me to just keep pushing, keep saving, tuck that money away. Um, So that's really what motivates me and being able to provide the life for my kids that I always wanted to be able to do and not have to do it through credit cards and, you know, X, Y, Z. Um, what is something that, um, that you like about working for whole roofing? I love that it is a family environment. Um, everybody here gets along everybody. And I know when I worked at other places, they're like, oh, it's a family environment. Really? It was not. Um, but here it genuinely is like Chris's kid, little kiddo Kylo, and Jonathan's kids, and Nick's got a baby on the way, and Joey, and your kids. Like, I love all of them as if they are mine. We all show up for each other. We're all there for each other. Um, When my dad got sick, y'all came in like an army and surrounded me and my family with love, and you were there to help build a floor, and you guys were there. You had no heat. (laughs) I mean... You guys just showed up in the masses and knowing that you're going to go to work for someone and you're helping, you know, this company create a bigger picture, but knowing that they have your back 100% of the time, that is a huge game changer for me. So I've been very fortunate with being here because I don't know what I would have done, you know, if I wasn't here and I didn't have the support that I had. I feel like the guys are kind of like our brothers, too. Like, yeah. And, well, brothers slash kids. <laughs> They're like your kids. <laughs> They're like my brothers. Yeah, You're the mom kids. of the, the mom. company. I mean, I didn't know I was going to have an older set of children <laughs> I was going to have to take care of. Take care um, of, feed, yeah, provide deodorant. Snacks. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is a, one of your favorite memories of whole roofing? We go, we try to do stuff oh, as a team periodically. Um, what's something that stands out to you that so when I started Bob and Emily and Nick and I and it will probably be my hands down favorite memory (laughs) of working here for all times we went um, down to like Bloomington area and went for a small retreat let's brainstorm let's see what that looks like for next quarter kind of just going over um how to help grow the business and what's going to help us personally and things like that. And they like to work out in the mornings, which is fine. (laughs) I like to work out just as well as the next person. Um, But Emily needed coffee and Nick said, Oh, there's a gas station just a mile up the road. Turned out to be a seven mile round trip. Um, On a dangerous highway. Dangerous highway that was not flat. There was ditches on both sides. We about got ran over several times. Um, I walked holes in my shoes. Me and Nick were limping, could barely walk by the end of it. Uh, But in the craziness of never trusting Nick with directions ever again, (laughs) it was probably one of the, like, funnest memories that I have just because it's something that normally wouldn't happen. And it was just, 
I, I get you a know. hammer out of that. You did. You, you know, got like a, a hammer. Tennis ball, maybe the tennis ball. I think you had a ditch. screwdriver, yeah. but you decided to ditch that one before we went into the gas yeah, station. Yeah, didn't <laughs> want to get arrested at that point. <laughs> And um, to make a sad story even sadder, the worst cup of coffee yeah. I've ever had. It was awful. Life. All of that. <laughs> I think you dumped it out before we uh, even yeah, got even to. Before we got it. halfway back, yeah. like, this is awful, and dumped it on the side of the road. So, um, yeah, that's. I mean, stories like that, and the guys coming in the office, oh, and they are um, we just every day you don't know what no. to expect, but it's always like. I mean, we have our Good stressful energy. days. However, like yeah. we make it fun, even yeah. though sometimes you might want to break down and cry. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. make the most of it, and like sometimes you just like, why? What is happening? It's they come in and they are nine out of ten times ball of energy. Just what's going on? How's it going? Go. Yeah, they are always ready to go. They always put a smile on your face, but then. They're the first one to be like, yep, I can go take care of whatever. So super thankful for all the guys here because they keep us on our toes. Yeah, and they, I mean. They, they don't make it mundane. Like, it takes the mundane yes. out of it because you never know what you're going to get with them. And if, you know, you have questions, yeah. if I have questions, if I we need help with something. Explain this a little this. bit more. Yeah, um, They will explain it, help us out. If they need to, even other guys' jobs, hey, mm-hmm. we really need you to run this over there if oh, you yeah. can. And the, if they can, they will. So, yeah, um, yeah it's just um, working with people and being around and that, you know, lift your mood when they're yeah. around is, like, really yeah. important because it just makes, it makes it can, working more fun. It does. And it can, you know... It's not that we do the same thing. We have the same procedures every single day. Yes. But sometimes you get stuck in the, like, I guess, autopilot of what you do. Yes. So having them come in, you know, periodically, sporadically, sometimes all at once, sometimes here and there, just kind of um, helps make it not feel so, like, robotic. You yes. know, get stuck in, like, a loop mentally. I know, and they they were gone this weekend, and it was quiet I know. In here and, I told um, Chris today, I was like, I'm so glad you guys are back. I missed hearing y'all. I missed talking to all of y'all. Um, what's, um, like, something that has really helped you learn more about the roofing, um, roofing, siding, gutters, um, any technology, anything that we use, like, has helped you? Um, the... I've been on the roof strategist stuff um, here and there, which is some, like, videos. Um, But honestly, just the seeing all the pictures and all the guys' knowledge and your knowledge of, it's not so much a, like, vocab word where you, like, see it, remember the definition. Mm -hmm. It's more of a, when I started here, there's no way I could have went out there and found a bundle of, duration whatever I was looking for and it's more just of learning that there are so many different and we do have like a bunch of cheat sheets that's probably been my saving yes. grace is my roofing cheat sheet siding cheat sheet um making a gutter one now since we're starting to, to move towards maybe having an in-house crew one day um but honestly I think our cheat sheets and all of our pamphlets and our little how-to mm-hmm. booklets that we have and that have been made not that we have made that have helped us I think that's probably been the biggest beneficial portion to me because I can be like oh here's my notes go back got it figured out so that's probably been the most helpful I slide Ellie a notebook and I'm like here yeah copies of all my little notes I yeah I think I was like a month in and you had your notebook and I was like can I have that you're like, yeah, and I just put it on the printer. It's like, there's no shame. Like, you can like, never remember everything. No. So that's why I nope. write it down in my little notebook. Well, and in my little, like, I call it my roofing Bible, uh, it's just pages of passwords. <laughs> and then scratched out, new <laughs> one. To Needs to change. Yeah. Because you timed out or whatever. But all my, I got my little Bible of all my notes of everything. And you know, that's probably been my saving grace. Yeah, because there, there's no way there was. Mm-hmm. Um, as you know, my husband lives um, and breathes will, it. Will um, tell you something, and you were supposed to retain it yeah. and forever retain yeah. that. And I, I need to touch, feel. Mm-hmm. I need to do all that. 
And that's how I am. That's why I was like, okay, if I don't write it down, I'm never going mm-hmm. to remember it. Yep. So that's why I started. That's that's probably my my technology is like I'm an 80 year old woman, so I just write <laughs> yes. everything down in a notebook. I don't yeah. want to use give me highlighters, a give or me yeah. And I feel like when I write it down, like I retain it, like I'm writing it down. Yeah. So, um, and like when we go, when we have the guys turn jobs in, um, and I start getting like all the customer files together, I've got my own cheat sheet that I get through that I'm like, yep, that's on there. Yep, that's on there. And I know when I started, you're like, I don't need all these extra words. Like, stop writing on this. Like, it's a check. I'm like, I understand that. But for me, it's like, okay, yep, I did see the facial boards. Yep, I did. Like, to me, it's I'm remembering, writing it down and remembering it. And you're like, oh, okay, I thought you were writing that for me. I was like, no, I'm writing that for me. So, like, Ellie, what is all this extra I'm like, stuff? I know it's extra, but for me, it's how I'm remembering it. Like, because I'm put, physically doing that. So, I mean, yeah, it's a lot to learn, and they're, every job is different, and yes. the guys, you know, which way, how they're going to turn in something, and even then, they've, how many times have they done it, and they still, still forget, forget. yeah, like, oh, I forgot to start flashing, they're like, hey, um, did you forget this? Yeah, they're like, uh, no, I'm pretty sure, and they're like, oh, pawn for the review, I did yep. forget mm-hmm. that. So, we kind of have to circle back around yeah. and uh, help them out. So. And I think, for me, it's helpful, especially with, like, the job that I went to today. Like, we have a whole list that the guys have to follow, like, as far as picture-wise, so we can be, you know, on our A-game when we get there. Mm-hmm. And we were like, okay, we had the wood that we needed. We had the OSB. We had all of this mapped out, and I color coat everything. Like, this is coming from shop. This is being delivered. Whatever. I know I was feeling so good. I was like, we are so prepared. And then we opened that roof, and it was like an Easter egg of surprises. Mm -hmm. And I was like, never would have saw that because of the way that it was. And I was like, okay, we adapt. We keep moving. We adapt. And they've got it closed up now. So, And that's, I mean, especially um, in Roche County and, I mean, other areas, but there's a lot of older homes. Yeah. So, People back in the day did, did what they had yeah. to do and used what they had. Exactly. So you tear off some siding, you don't know what you're going to find out oh, yeah. there. Um, so like that one that we did in Connorsville, and it had like four layers of who knows what it was. Yep. And they're like, well, we thought it would have a bunch under there, but not that much. I'm like, well, in that case, we didn't really know till you started taking it layer by layer off. Like, hey, we had this goop in a bucket, and we just put it on here for the last 50 years. Yeah. This, well, it kind of leaked, and that goop stopped it, so. <laughs> no, but that makes it, I mean, interesting learning something yeah. new. I think Because uh, if we don't me, see that, then. Yeah. yeah. Because if you go to a normal job, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's, a lot of times it's the same thing every day yeah. that you're doing. And um, it can like soul sucking like it Mm -hmm. drains it out of you having to do the same thing but I think when I came in I had the mindset of like I worked at a bowling alley wasn't that hard but never thought I would be running this big robot oil lane machine and I learned how to do that or didn't think I'd ever learn how to fix a bowling machine in the back (laughs) learned how to do that I was like I can figure out this roofing stuff like got this I run a I ran a bowling alley. I ran a bowling alley. Like, I can do this. I was like, oh, this might be a little different than Uh chasing pins. A little did you know. So, but in like every day, like deliveries come in, the Mm -hmm. mail comes in, people come in. So it's like ever revolving. Like, you don't know what's going to happen. And I, with what I do, like talking to customers, like I normally am the first point of contact when you call in. Um, And I really enjoy that. Like, I am a people person. Mm-hmm. Um, I know sometimes. See, you you're are not great at answering the phone. <laughs> I would despise that. Oh no, another yeah. phone call. Yeah, I got to talk like, to I, somebody. I I like that. I like talking to people. I like mm-hmm. trying to make their day. Like you don't know what's going on in somebody else's life. So if my five minute phone call taking your information, I can make you laugh or make you feel more at ease. Like, that's, that's it for me, just yeah. helping other people and, like, being out there today. I got to meet the homeowners and talk to her for a while, and, you know, she told me the story of her house, and even though we were just, to us, we're like, we're making this roof look good. Like, to her, it was emotional because yeah. she put that roof on 30 years ago, and that's where she's lived, and yeah. her life is in that. So, you know, 
To we us, don't it's just, just another to thing. us, it's just a roof, and we're like, that's gonna look great. But to watch, to see people's stories and lives, like it's more to it. So, like, I really did enjoy being out there, being with the homeowner, talking to her, um, laughing with her significant other, and I got to, you know, she was upset about it, and we were able to console her. Like, totally understand. Yeah, we get it. I get it. We're here for you, and so she really appreciated that. Yeah, it's so. their home. Like that's, and a lot of times that's the biggest investment someone has. So, yeah, I mean, all their memories are underneath that roof. Yeah, so we have to do yeah. our due diligence. Of, make sure um, it, put it back right. Yes, and do it the right way, and make sure they're happy at the end of the day. And so, to me, that's the best part about what I get to do is I get to at least talk to all of our customers once, yes. if not twice or three times throughout the whole process. Mm-hmm. And it's nice when um, you get all done and, like, they're so happy and they're just, yeah. like, appreciative of the whole team. Oh, yeah. And, like, that just, it makes, that's rewarding, too. So, yeah. Um, how do you think, or how have you grown the most um, personal, professional working um, first when you started and then now where you're at? Um, Professional-wise, I feel like my knowledge of the industry has grown. Um, I love to learn new things so for me that was never really a challenge of being like I need to adapt I need to learn new things um but I feel like instead of before when I was like I really have no idea what this is and I would like hover and be like Emily I don't know I need your help and now I'm like okay I've seen different scenarios I can figure out my own game plan like Bob was asking me to price furnaces yesterday and he sent me like kind of what he had in mind I was like I don't know the difference of it but here's what looks closest all these numbers look similar here you go and he was like I'm just looking at other prices it didn't have to be like ideal I was like okay well that's good but that's close I could find um so being able to like adapt adapt a little bit is a lot easier for me now um personally I feel like I am a stronger person working here Uh, I was very broken when I started here. I just started, um, Bryce and I had only been together for a few months, and I was still dealing with a lot of things from um, my old marriage and trying to figure out how in the world, like, I'm still going to make it, still technically a single mom. You know, Bryce wasn't living with me yet. Um, How how am I going to do this? How am I going to work eight to five and take care of my kids and do all the things that I need to do and heal along the way. And luckily whole is all about, I don't want to say becoming a better person because everybody's mm-hmm. a great who they are. Yeah. Um, but just dealing with trauma and owning your self and being like, this is who I am. Be, I'm happy with who I am, you know, get out of your own way and stay true to who you are. Um, I don't feel as broken anymore. I feel like I've had a lot of healing and um, sounds cliche to say like I'm a better version, but like, I feel like I am a better and happier person than when I walked in. Um, I faked it a lot of days. Like when I started just because I was like trying, I wanted to make such a good first impression. Mm -hmm. Like don't let them see crack. Don't let them. And now last week I was like in the office, I was like, Hey, not doing okay today, spiraling a little bit, give me a hug, let me cry for five minutes, and get right back to it. And now I'm like, Emily's one of my best friends, and like now I feel comfortable, but I felt like I had to be so strong and be this person. Yes. And in reality, I didn't have to. I could be like, I could have been like that the whole time. Yes. But it took me learning to figure that out, so. Well, I will say that you have helped me grow, Ellie, because... As you know, I'm not a hugger. <laughs> You're not a hugger. I, I will gratefully accept your hugs now. <laughs> but I'm and I'm no longer a gargoyle when you're giving no. me a hug. <laughs> no. Now you I mean, I think almost every day we start off with a hug. Yes. We start off with a hug. And then if I feel like you're having a bad day, I'm like, mm, that's not how we greet Ellie. Let's try again. <laughs> 
Um, and Ellie, uh, she hears it, sees it all, and um, half the time I'm yelling, Ellie, from my office, and she's like, we're yelling back and forth, yeah. so it's convenient that our offices are and next door to each other. It's funny that, you know, you can't see, you need glasses and contacts. I think I'm, like, deaf half the time, because <laughs> you're talking, and I'm like, I don't know what you're saying to me. So then she's screaming, and we're screaming back and forth, and half the time Jonathan's looking at us like, you're right next, we just need to cut a hole. Probably. That's what like we need to do. Little, like, we need to put a hole in, like where you're, uh, yeah, where the bottom. We can just at. like pass things back yes. and forth. We don't even need that wall there. We'll just, just take, take the wall. Bob's off. office. We'll just swap. That's a good idea. We'll just go Maybe and Bob we'll work on that. But yeah. then we'd probably never get anything done. <laughs> It'd be bad. We'd have to like have a curtain that we pull. <laughs> Stop talking to me for five minutes. Well, um, Ellie, I appreciate you um being on our team um we've grown a lot um you've grown a lot as a person Mm -hmm. we've grown a lot together as a business um added more team members um i think we've had um fun along the way we have we've had we've had our days where it's just like okay i throw up my hands i quit but then we come back come back in come right back in the next day so I just wanted to say I appreciate you. I, I love appreciate you. you. I'm I so glad you. that you're on our team. And um, anything we can do to help you and um, just love you and can't wait to see you get married yeah. in a few months. Are you so excited? It's going to be so much fun. <laughs> it's going to be fun. I'm I excited. really voting for the pizza. I'm sorry. We're not doing pizza. <laughs> Listen, second time around, we're doing it as cheap as possible. My uncle is making my wedding cake. It's not even going to have icing on it. You might get a tub of ice cream if you're lucky. So, oh. <laughs> um, this, Can we just talk about the biscuits and gravy? Please? Oh, what about um, it? Ellie, that you put onions in you, yours? Uh, no, onion powder. But can uh. you tell our viewers how you make your gravy? There's nothing wrong with it. It is... It's how I was taught it. It's all it's I know. because they were pioneers <laughs> and they didn't have ingredients. Um, normally, it doesn't. It has sausage in it now because Bryce likes to have sausage in it. But when I learned how to make it, we just took, like, bacon grease or Crisco. And you melted it and you salted it. And then you put your flour in. And then, because my granny had so many siblings, there were 17 of them, 16 or 17. So they had to stretch it out, right? But she had to feed them all. They mixed it with milk and water. Uh, didn't they have a cow or something? That was back in the day. No, they were poor. <laughs> they were poor. And so they mixed it with milk and water, and that's how we were taught to make gravy because it stretched it out, but it was you can't taste the water. Uh, My favorite kind of gravy is to be you. salty and taste like flour. You put it over white bread, don't you? You don't even use biscuits. I use a biscuit. I'm not... I'm not... <laughs> I'm not that poor. (laughs) If anybody's looking for a good sausage, I've got it. Awesome. Pioneer woman has a great one. No, but onions. Okay, she puts onions in there, but I don't put whole onions. But I sprinkle onion powder, and it makes it a game changer. Oh my gosh! So nobody needs onion powder in biscuits and gravy. Oh yes, you do that. I I just want some like plain Jane. Flour gravy. That's um, all I want. We can agree to disagree. That's Ellie. fine. So, love you anyway. So, <laughs> thanks guys. I appreciate you listening, and we will see you on the next episode. Yeah. Bye.